Picture this place, a small historic city located in the northwest of Austria, a postcard city dominated with domes and spires, and storybook fortresses and palaces, a history lauded by prince archbishops being the birthplace of a musical genius, and tinged with memories of a great Hollywood musical. This is the picture and the legacy of Salzburg. Word is already out. Salzburg is one of Austria's shining jewels, a small scale fairy tale bonanza of old world European prime. Quite literally, pitch perfect for those looking to experience a smaller European city and still delivers lots of charms, stunning architecture, and majestic sceneries aplenty. The atmosphere in the city is so special that some of the old streets and grand squares have remained unchanged for nearly three centuries, ever since perhaps its most famous citizen, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, had lived here. But I've come to find out that Salzburg's stature rises way above Mozart's shadow. During my trip in Budapest and Vienna en route to Munich, I found that Salzburg makes for an enticing stopover between Austria and Germany. And so I dedicated three full days to experience Salzburg and get to know more than the sum of its counterparts. So, in this video, I'll be guiding you, dear viewer, hopefully beyond what sites to see, but how to experience Salzburg well. From where the best historical sites to the must visit palaces and gardens, learning the city's history along the way. And if you're patient enough, you'll be rewarded with some hidden gems, tips on where to see the most wonderful views, which cafes and restaurants to eat, the best beer gardens to visit and even help you scout some location spots for all of you fans of the beloved musical The Sound of Music. So, where to begin? Of course, we'll start at the historic heart of the city, also known as Altstadt, a whole perimeter of the old city that's recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You walk around here, along the maze of narrow streets and spacious squares, and you begin to wonder about the story of Salzburg. The clue lies in its name, Salz, which means salt in German. And in the 7th century, this place was founded by Bishop Rupert from the remains of a ruined Roman town as part of the Bavarian Kingdom, and then drew its wealth, position and power from salt mining and trade, which was considered white gold at the time. Salzburg literally means salt castle. But it's not until Salzburg became its own kingdom, independent from the Austrian Empire, a unique place where politics, monarchy and religion were intertwined, where prince archbishops ruled the place in the 14th and 15th centuries, leading up to the 17th and 18th, when this sovereign city-state was truly transformed into one of Europe's most extraordinarily baroque cities, filling it with grandiose palaces and castles, churches and squares, so much of what we now see and experience as Altstadt. While you're here, especially for first-timers like me, I highly recommend going for a walking tour, and there are free ones that you can get in the city. Once you cross the Saltak River, and across the Marco Feingold footbridge, or the famous Art Nouveau Mozart Bridge, the old town awaits for you to discover. Walk through Getrei de Gasse, Salzburg's most famous thoroughfare, with incredibly charming shop fronts and wrought iron guild signs, many of which date back to the Middle Ages, when shop owners used to communicate their trade by using visual signs, accommodating the lack of literacy back then. One thing I love about this part of the old town is the numerous arcaded passageways, leading you in a maze-like exploration around the city, through different courtyards with unexpected surprises in every corner. But to truly get to know the splendor of the city, you'd have to understand the extraordinary lengths that Salzburg pursued to achieve the Baroque city that it is today. Once you step into its grand squares, palaces and cathedrals, you'd understand that Baroque reigns supreme in the city. For Salzburg, being located in the Northern Alps during the 17th and 18th centuries, was seated at the crossroads between Italian and German cultures, at the height when the Baroque movement flourished thanks to one key figure that commanded Salzburg's transformation, Prince Archbishop Wolf-Dietrich von Gretena. Proceed to the Dom Quartier, a palatial and museum complex located at the heart of the city, and you'll see the imprints of this powerful figure, a true patron of the arts who loved the Italian art movement and vowed to place Salzburg on the map as the Rome of the North. And transform he did. He commissioned the prolific Italian architect, Vincenzo Scamozzi, to build grandiose squares, Domplatz, Kapitelplatz, and Residenzplatz, all adjacent to each other. 
He then transformed an existing bishop's residence into the opulent palace that we see today. This is a Salzburg residence, or also known as the Old Residence, where the Archbishop Wolf Dietrich lived. This palace houses 180 state rooms, and you can go in for a tour and marvel at the absolute resplendence, the grandeur and flamboyant expression the Baroque era was known for. Go through the Carabinieri room, the audience room, the throne room, and behold every exquisite detail, with marvelous ceilings adorned with frescoes by the Austrian painter Johann Michael Rottmeier. Through the state rooms, you can also visit Residence Gallery, where you're transported into a world of artistic splendor, where you'll encounter works by renowned artists such as Rembrandt, Rubens, and Vermeer. Don't forget to ascend to the terrace, one that offers a view of the stately residence flats below, flanked with a fountain that's considered the largest Baroque fountain in Central Europe. From here, you are also able to access the organ loft of the Salzburg Cathedral, a hidden gem where you'll have a truly unique, elevated perspective of this beautifully built cathedral. To know more about the story of Salzburg, head to the Salzburg Museum across the square, housed in a new residence, showing Salzburg's rise from ancient times to the Baroque town that we see today. Due to its religious heritage and being touted as Rome of the North, Salzburg is filled with religious buildings, including churches, abbeys, convents, monasteries, and the one magnificent cathedral. These are, in fact, some of the finest examples of religious Baroque in the entirety of Austria. They also stood as symbols, showcasing the power, wealth, and influence of the once ruling ecclesiastical elite. You'd have to start with the oldest of them all, St. Peter's Abbey, founded by St. Rupert, the same bishop who established Salzburg. This structure dates back from the 7th century, and even though this has been remodeled throughout centuries, it's still considered the oldest monastery existing in the German-speaking world. Go in and be in awe of the incredible congregation of art throughout the centuries, Romanesque, Gothic, Renaissance, and Rococo styles. While you're here, don't miss out on visiting the cemetery grounds outside, making for a sobering and peaceful visit, a quietly impressive place to explore. With catacombs carved into the fortress hill of the Festungsberg, you'll also recognize this cemetery featured in the musical The Sound of Music. Next in our visit is a Franciscan church, built in the 8th century, a Romanesque structure that was later replaced in the 15th century. Its Gothic tower is one of the most recognizable icons over the rooftops of Salzburg. Its interior church choir is even more impressive, containing nine chapels built by one of Austria's leading Baroque architects, Johann Bernhard Fischer von Erlach, who was also responsible for the nearby Collegiate Church. Then of course you have the majestic Salzburg Cathedral, all early Baroque pomp and regal resplendence. It's considered the centerpiece of Salzburg, with its imposing Untersberg marble facade and the first Baroque church in Austria. One thing to note, this cathedral was burned down, destroyed, damaged, and was rebuilt a few times throughout the ages, only for us to witness its full magnificence and its resilience today. Lastly, but not the least, there's the Nonberg Abbey, located at the slopes of the Festungsberg, founded in the early 8th century, with a convent that's considered the oldest working nunnery in the world. While the abbey itself is off limits, you can visit the church where the sound of music was filmed, where also the real-life Maria von Trapp started as a candidate to be a nun and later got married. One thing you must do in Salzburg is to get a glimpse of what Altstadt looked like from up above, and you'd have to go up to the one place that dominates Salzburg like an indefatigable ruler. The Hohen Salzburg Fortress, the city's undisputed throne and Central Europe's biggest and most fully preserved medieval castle. To get up there, the easiest way is the Festungbahn, the funicular that takes you all the way up to the fortress, a ticket that's included if you buy the Salzburg car. And up there, at over 500 meter in altitude, this landmark 11th century fortress is so well preserved that once you're here, once you walk into the inner courtyard, you feel like you've stepped back in medieval time, when the Prince Archbishops ruled this place with unswaying authority since the 11th century when this fortress was built. Go into the Fortress Museum and you'll learn that the reason why it's so well preserved is due to the fact that this fortress remained unbesieged until today. Only the German Peasants' War came close, but even that significant uprising failed to take this fortress. Don't forget to visit the curious Marionette Museum, celebrating Salzburg's love for puppetry. But undoubtedly, the most remarkable experience of this fortress is the panoramic tour around this place, giving you the most stunning views across this centuries-old city. 
and from the back of the fortress, the unparalleled beauty of the majestic arts from a distance. As you know, music is inextricably linked to Salzburg. The city's arguably greatest musical heritage comes from the fact that it is the birthplace of Mozart. Yes, that Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Considered one of the musical geniuses of the classical era and perhaps the entire history of Western music. You can visit his childhood home, the bright yellow house in Getre de Gasse, and then across the Salzach River, visit the Mozart residence at Machartplatz, where he lived with his family while he was a musician at Salzburg court before he moved to Vienna at 25 years old. Elsewhere in the town, Salzburg loves its most famous son, the city's historic confectioner, Fürst created the now world-famous Mozart Kugel, this chocolate-covered pistachio marzipan sweet as a tribute to the musical composer. Since we're the theme of music, another musical influence that gave the city another iconic status is the 1965 Robert Wise musical The Sound of Music. One of the most famous filming locations is the Schloss Mirabel and Gardens, perched at the other side of the river, with a privileged view of the fortress. The sound of music was immortalized here, with Julie Andrews' Maria and the trapped children singing and dancing around these beautiful gardens, the Pegasus Fountain, and the steps of the Rose Hill. The palace and gardens were built in the early 17th century, ordered by the controversial Prince Archbishop Wolf Dietrich to house his mistress Salome Alt. It was rebuilt later in the 18th century into the Baroque style that we see today. This is one of Salzburg's most iconic attractions. As you can see, the gardens here are exquisitely maintained. Don't forget to visit the Dwarf Garden, the oldest of its kind in Europe, with sculptures that are made from Untersberg marbles. 28 of them used to be here, and only 17 survive today. And Salzburg displays their artistic value at the Bastion Garden at this stunning location. Now that we've done much of the historic and sightseeing activities in Salzburg, it's time to guide you through some of the places where you can eat, drink, and just be happy while you're in the city. After all that walking, you'll certainly need to quench your thirst. And since you're in Austria, well, why not try some of the best Austrian wines in the Bar Hillinger, just outside the Mirabel Gardens. Cafe culture is also part of the cultural tapestry of the city. This is Austria, after all. Nearby is the nostalgic and historic Cafe Bazaar, where you can have breakfast or lunch in the wood-paneled interiors, or outside on the patio, with a splendid view of the river. At the historic center in Altamar is Cafe Tomaseri, the oldest coffee house in the entire Austria. I love this cafe so much, I went back twice to enjoy coffee and their sumptuous cakes, which are unmatched anywhere else. You can truly feel the atmosphere and spirit of the Austrian cafe culture in this special place. When you're in this part of the town, do wander around the University Square and grab a pretzel snack in one of these stands. Or, if you wander deeper into the passageways, you'll get a surprise from Balkan Grill Walter, a snack called Bosna, made with spiced sausage, a kind of Austrian bratwurst, which you can enjoy as a street food when you're wandering around Salzburg. Another thing you must know, Austria loves beer gardens. And in Salzburg, we went to three of them. The first one we went to is the Stiegel Keller, this traditional brewery and restaurant just below the Hohen Salzburg Fortress, with an outdoor space that offers a divine view of the old city. We had a traditional Austrian meal here, Weichwurstkopf, or boiled white sausages with pretzels, paired with locally brewed Stiegel Keller beer. Downtown, there's Sternbräu, this popular brewery and beer garden that dates back all the way to 1542. We enjoy the famous star beer and feasted in Salzburg cuisine with roast pork and dumplings and delicious bratwurst. The final beer garden we went to was the biggest one and is located further along the city, in Mühlen district, at the foot of the Munchberg. So we went for a beer hunt, nearly got lost along the way, and finally found Augustine Breu, this brewery that was run by Mott, considered the largest beer garden in Austria, a true institution for beer lovers. There's a great outdoor beer garden, an historic beer hall inside. And if you get hungry, you can fetch some local delicacies through the Delicatessen Arcade in the Market Hall. I love that they pour beer directly from beer barrels into stone mugs. And this place has such a great atmosphere. And some would say this beer institution is a real cultural center and a piece of Salzburg heritage. We 
We spend the remainder of our time in Salzburg searching for the best lookouts, viewpoints that truly offer you a stunning Salzburg panorama. And it turns out the best ones are across the Salzach River on a mountaintop called Kapuzinerberg. This is not for the faint-hearted. We had to climb the Imberstiege stairway to get to the mountain. But trust me, this climb is well worth it. This place will offer you one of the best unobstructed view of Salzburg, a really peaceful place to just wind down and just enjoy the views of this city. And this was the end of our Salzburg trip. We celebrated and bid farewell to the city on the Stein Terrasse, above Hotelstein, sipping some cocktails and watching the sun go down, enjoying this Salzburg view as much as we could. For three days, I learned a lot about the city, coming out truly appreciating what a unique, outstanding place Salzburg is. For this city to just exist on its own terms, its own sublime beauty, with its own deep sense of history and belonging, offering anyone who visits a glimpse of its past, its glorious splendor, giving us a sincere reminder that there will never ever be a place like Salzburg. Hello, it's Jans here. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching my Salzburg video. It's been a while since I've spoken to you face to face. Actually, every time you're here watching In The Mood For Life videos, it means the world to me. So I am truly grateful for your continuous, never ending support on my channel. Now, I have something to share. I am thrilled to share with you my new exclusive merchandise. As you can see, I'm wearing one. The new In The Mood For Life collection. It's been something I've been working for a while in the background and finally it's here. We have t-shirts, hoodies, jumpers, all comfortable and cozy to wear and a tote bag. Great for traveling around, carrying around, going for your next adventure. All these items are designed and created with a conscious reflection of what In The Mood For Life brand is all about. Reminding you to make the most of today, pursue your love and passions and above all, create your own meaning. I hope that by wearing and using these will help remind you of those philosophies and create your own adventure. Whether you're buying it for yourself, for your family or friends, every profit I make from this merch goes into my creator fund, helping me create more videos and help sustain the In The Mood For Life channel. Check out the link in description from an official merch shop. Grab your favorites and please don't forget to tag hashtag In The Mood For Life in social media to show off your cool new merch. And that's it. Thank you so much for your support once again. And please remember, travel with care, live happily, and see you next time.